It has been our honor to serve you. Believe in yourself. Dare to dream. Live life and always use your moral compass to guide you. We are proud of you. We love you. And we have claimed health, prosperity, and happiness for you all. Graduates, please turn your tassels from right to left. Tears flowed along with congratulatory messages recently as teachers and school officials bade an emotional farewell to Prince George's County Public Schools 7,500 graduating seniors, a class of much achievement and much promise. Let's celebrate your class that collectively earned $15.4 million in scholarships to our finest colleges and universities. You will be the first Wise High School class to post a graduation rate of over 90%. Robed in a rainbow of different colors and wearing mortarboards perched at precarious angles, the graduates marched into arenas like Maryland's Xfinity Center, looking both absolutely jubilant and justifiably anxious at the same time. Bowie valedictorian Hannah Flores summed up those joyful jitters nicely. Before I begin, I want everyone to breathe in and breathe out. That was mainly for me, but also you too. Now, focus your energy at this current moment we are all sharing right now. And if all the pomp and playfulness were traditional, what graduation is without a few wardrobe malfunctions, so too were most of the encouraging words and bits of advice delivered by television newscasters and county officials, one of whom quoted comedian Martin Lawrence. Life is like a bike, and I want you to ride it until the wheels come off. Take advantage of every opportunity you have to improve yourself, your family, and your community. So I'm standing here today to tell you that regardless of what you've been through, what you've lost, how many times you've fallen, whether you've failed, whatever people say to you, you have to push through the pain and the disappointment and keep going. You have to push past your deepest fears. Here are the four main ingredients of persistence that I've learned. You must have a purpose. Figure out your purpose in life, your calling, your special God-given gifts, your abilities that you can sow onto the world. Do it with passion. Love what you do. Have a plan. Stick to the plan. Have the discipline to stick to the plan. And number four, you must recognize the people that help you because sooner or later you're going to have to help somebody else. But the words and images that resonated most were those of youngsters whose families had only recently reached America's shores. Their long, often difficult to pronounce names reminded of those generations long ago who'd also come in search of freedom and opportunity. And like many of their immigrant forebearers, this year's graduates have made the most of America, excelling at school and expressing boundless gratitude for the chance to do so. As graduates today, regardless of whether you are Salon, Nigerian, <laughs> Honduran, or Guyanese, our background should not serve as a barrier, but as a platform for us to build a legacy of perseverance that will encourage others like we have succeeded today. We would like to say thank you to everybody who supports us, to our teachers. Without your teaching and guidance, we would not have the knowledge possible to go out and apply it to the real world. To our friends, you all believed in us when the world said otherwise. And most of all, we are grateful to our roots for always being there for us and for giving Namrata and me the opportunity to receive an education in the United States. Despite my differences, I stand here as the class valedictorian, a testament to the fact that no matter your race, culture, or religion, you can be whatever you choose to be. 
As we know, assimilation and acceptance for immigrants is often challenging, as two guest speakers, an Ethiopian and a Latina, could attest. I came to United States as a refugee immigrant. There is nothing wrong with refugees. Because I care deeply about this country that adopted me and gave me all the opportunities to be who I am today. See, when I look out on the crowd right now, I see the DNA of America. What makes us exceptional? All of you look different. This diversity is what makes us the exceptional nations that we are. I was told that I couldn't do a lot of things because I wasn't the best student, because I was Latina, because I was a first-born generation American, because I was too young, because I was a woman, and even today, 13 years later, people tell me no because I'm a mom. So I'm here to tell you today, do not listen to any of them. So while the graduates of Prince George's 27 high schools were rightly proud of what they'd done. So what do you say, class of 2017? Do you think the world is ready for us? They were also humbled by their achievement and grateful to their families, their teachers, and particularly their country for making it all possible. Many of us here today were born into conditions and situations beyond our control. Some of us are from low-income families. Some of us are from disenfranchised, marginalized groups. Some of us are first-generation Americans born to parents who immigrated here from their respective countries so they can provide better opportunities for us. Some of us didn't even speak a word of English when we got here. And now look at us, despite the odds, we made it. Congratulations to the class of 2017, who we join in paying tribute to the land of the free and the home of the brave. This is Dave Zarin reporting.